Okay, the first thing we're going to look at is we're going to kind of take our arithmetic sequences and we're going to expand them out. That was kind of like what we started the other day, but we didn't quite get to. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to write down the first six, we'll just go to the first four. We're going to write down the first four terms of this sequence, okay? And then we will see what it looks like graph. We won't graph it, but we'll, we'll let them graph it for us so you can kind of see it, okay? So let's copy down. So copy down your formula. And you notice, what do you see up here that was on your homework? You see the brackets? So they're saying that a sub n, that is a sequence, and the, the um, sequence rule or the general formula is the n minus 1 divided by n. All right, if we find a sub 1, we put in a 1 for our n's. 1 minus 1 is what? 0, zero and 0 divided by 1 is 0. zero. a sub 2. Half. 2 minus 1 over 2. Mm -hmm. a sub 3. That would be 3 minus 1 over 3, or 2 thirds. Can you see the pattern that it's following? And, let's just, and, the, and then our fourth one, a sub 4. 4 minus 1 over 4, which is 3 fourths. So do you see the pattern? You see the numerator is always 1 less than the denominator. So it would look like this. You don't have to write it out, but here's your first six terms. So this would be the term, the first six terms of our sequence. And you can see each time the numerator is always one less than the denominator. Any questions on that? It's just a matter of subbing in okay, and expanding. Subbing in and expanding. And if we graph that on the coordinate plane, we end up with something that looks like this. What's that kind of look like? What's a function from Algebra 2 that that looks like? Is that linear? No. What do you think it is? Hmm? Parabolas, remember parabolas only open up or open down, right? This is opening that direction. Exponential? Square root. Square root. I, I, th I like the square root. It kind of looks like a square root to me. The exponential, if the exponential is increasing, remember the exponential would increase like this, and it would go up like that. What? Mm. How about how about your log function? Michael mentioned the exponential. The exponential would go up this way. But it's inverse, the log would do what? It would reflect it and go this way. So this looks like a log to me. Does it look like that to you? Okay. A little bit. It's been shifted up, right? Usually it's down here. Oh, it's hadn't really been, it's been um, stretched, it's stretching up. So it looks like to me. Okay. So remember your recursive sequences always give you the s sub 1. So we already know that. So we're going to write that down. So we already know that our s sub 1 is 1. Now we're going to start with the, with the s sub 2. The s sub 2, so now wherever the n is, we're going to replace that with the 2. So what's going to go here? 2, two and what's going to go here? So we're going to have 2 and s, so, in my, so 2 minus 1 would be what? So that would be s sub 1. What is our s sub 1? One? 1. 1. So this would be 2 times 1 or what? 2. Let's do our s sub 3. Okay, so now we're going to replace the 3. So now it's going to be what? 3 times the S of 3 minus 1, which is 2, S of 2. Okay, 
which is what? What's the, What's your S of 2? Two? 2. So 3 times 2, which would give you what? 6. You do S of 4, and we'll stop there. So S of 4 is going to be 4 times S of what? 3. So 4 times, what's your S of 3? So what would you get? 24. Okay. That's how our recursive formula works. You see it? You, you pull what you got from the previous term. Okay. So the terms are all, the terms are kind of dependent on each other. In a, All right, so we're going to take a look at an example of how we can use that summation notation. So let's, let's write this first one down. We're going to look at A. Write that down for me. Okay. So we started with that K equals 1, and we could keep going, but since we don't know what number we're going to reach over here, we will just go ahead and do our et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and then we'll just go ahead and end it with the N. Questions on that? What's different about the one I just wrote down and the one we just did? It actually has that number up there. So we're going to expand this out. How many terms are we going to write? Four. Four. So let's do that. So our first J, instead of J, we'll put one. So that's going to be what? One squared plus 1 plus, what's going to come next? Mm -hmm. And next? And finally? So figure out what's that going to be. So your 1 squared plus 1 is what? 2. Your 2 squared plus 1? 5. Your 3 squared plus 1? Mm, 3 squared is... And your 4 squared plus 1? 17. So what's your sum? This time we get an actual sum. What is it? Set what? 85? What'd you say? 35. 35? Is that right? Yes or no? I'm writing it down. 34. 34? Okay. Okay. So two cases. Cases. One case where we, we know where we're headed, okay, because they gave us the ending here. The other case, the first case, we didn't know where we were headed, so our summation actually still contained our variable, okay? We're going to look at both of these. We're going to sum both of these. Some of them, would, we won't know where we're going. Our sum will still maintain the end, and some of these sums that we will find, we're actually going to go and actually find a number like we did on here. Questions on this? Okay. So let's go back over what we did. We're going to use our summation formula of n divided by 2 equals a sub 1 plus a sub n. We had to find the a sub 1. We had to find the a sub 1, which we could do because they gave us the general a sub n. So we subbed that in and we got our a sub 1 to equal 6. Now, remember I said earlier, if we don't know that nth term, that they just gave it to us as an actual formula itself, our actual answer or sum will have it in it as well. So then we're going to take everything and sub it in. So this is going to go in as our a sub 1, and this goes in as our a sub n. Clean it up. Try to get into the habit of moving your half. If you move your half to the inside, it makes it easier to work with. You can do that because it is division and multiplication. 
And once we simplify that down, we divide. Make sure that when you divide the two, you divide into both of them. Can't just do one. You've got to do them both. You can leave your answer in this form. You do not have to multiply the n back in, and you can leave it. Okay, I'm going to go back to your homework assignment about the jogger, right? They gave you the total miles that the jogger needed to run, and then they asked you how many days will it be before he can accomplish that, right? And remember, the days were where it was in the sequence, the term, right? And that, that 26.2, what was it? That 26.2 was the term. It was that term, right? So this is the same concept. They gave us the term itself. But we need to find where is it? What term is it? Is it the 20th term? Is it the 10th term? Is it the 8th term? We don't know. But we can find it. Right? So we're going to find it. So what's our a sub 1? 52 plus... We don't know what term it is, so we'll have to leave that as our n minus 1. Your warm-up, we knew what it was. We could put it in. We don't know what it is here. What's the difference? What's the constant difference? Five, five. 5. So times 5. So we'll distribute the 5. So that would give us 5n minus 5. Combine our like terms, that would give us what? We're going to subtract, aren't we? 52 minus 5 is 47. I'm going to bring that 122 on down here. Now solve it for n. What's that going to give you? So what term are we working with here? The 15, n equals 15. Let's clean that up. So we are finding the 15th term. All right, so let's sub into our formula. So our summation, what term are we going to? We're stopping at what term? The 15th. So the 15th over the 2 on the outside of the parentheses, what's our a sub 1? 52. 52. Plus, we, ought, we know our a sub n is what? What's the value of your a? It's the 122. Yes, thank you. Okay. So our 52 plus our 122, that's going to be 174. So let's do 174. We're going to move that 2 under there. So take the 174, divide it by 2 times 15, and we'll get a numerical amount here. What do you get? 